We welcome you to this broadcast of Boys Varsity Basketball on NK Toko Sports. We are here at Jackson Center High School, the habitat of the cat, where the Anna Rockets will take on the Jackson Center Tigers. Tonight's game is brought to you by the following sponsors. Keyhole Pizza, First National Bank, Precision Strip, Emerson Climate Technologies, Carriage Works, Grand Lake Health, Kogi Plumbing and Heating, Lincoln Electric Automation, Minster Bank, New Knoxville Supply, Pratt Industries, Wagner's IGA, Wilson Health, Winners Meats, Allen Ball Insurance, and NK Telco. You're looking live here at Jackson Center High School, the Habitat of the Cat. My name is Brandon Coverman, and alongside me, Jeff Engine tonight for this first Friday in December, second week of the high school boys basketball season. And it is a Shelby County battle between these teams. First, taking a look at the visitors, the Anna Rockets. Jeff, you had a chance to see them in action against the Knoxville Rangers. They take home a win against the Rangers in the opening on their opening night. And, you know, what are they kind of looking like this year? Well, they they have to replace a big-time score. And Fingenbein, who was player of the year last year, averaged 25 points a game. But they placed three players in double figures against Do Knoxville in their first game of the season. That was on the road. It's so a back-to-back road games for the Rockets. But they want to, they're not real big, so they're going to have to do the small things, hustle plays, uh, be aggressive with the basketball. Not a lot of size, but, you know, a good start for them on the road. A big, uh, almost 40-point win against the Rangers. And taking a look on the flip side for the Tigers, they opened up on opening night. They lost to the Rushi Raiders, had a shot at the horn that didn't fall for them. They're down an injury in Kellen Riker right now. They're own one, and, and ever since then, they've had a seven-day layoff, so a long layoff for both these teams. But Jackson Center sitting at 0-1, but a lot of veteran senior talent on this team. Yeah, big matchup here early in the season. You said it's just week two, and already well, both uh, for, for Jackson Center, they opened up in league play last week. What an opener when you... You know, you had some scrimmages and such, but nothing's like a home opener. And then to go to Rushi, a hostile environment, you know, probably a large crowd and such. So a tough opening test for them. And, you know, a, a game, obviously, they know they could have won. But, you know, you're already one game down, down the loss column. So uh, for the Jackson Center Tigers, you don't want to go down two games. For the Anna Rockets, they're going to look to build off the success they had in their opener. You know, and build upon that against a good Tigers team here at their place. Yeah, that Jackson Center team had an 11-point lead going into that fourth quarter. Lost it. Missed a shot at the horn by Jace Mullenhauer. As both teams go to their bench, we're going to take it down to our PA announcer, Kim Metz, as we will have the national anthem starting lineups here next on NK Telco Sports. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bob. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course, it's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Keyhole Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. Together, we are family, working safely for our loved ones. We are problem solvers who challenge the status quo and drive improvement. We care about our customer relationships. We stay true to our values, caring and respecting one another. We embrace change as we journey through our career. We are Precision Strip, the world's leading processor of rolled steel and aluminum. Precision Strip, doing the exceptional. At Wilson Health, we're extending care beyond the walls of the hospital with resources designed to keep you in charge of your health. Our independence and connection to the community are unique in a world where big healthcare strives to act like corporations. Our tools may be the same, but we are different. We're neighbors, friends, and family who truly care about the people who live here. We call it caring without limits, and it's just the beginning of a whole new Wilson Health. 
Back here on NK Tucka, sports very touching moment of silence right before the pregame from Coach Scott Elkert. Tigers tragically losing 2020 graduate and former Tiger player TJ Esser tragically in the offseason. Uh, and they dedicating this season to him by wearing specially designed socks uh, for them. So our thoughts out to the Jackson Center community. But as we got a basketball game to get underway here, as we take a look at our starting lineups, Number two, 6'2", senior Carter Siegel. Number four, 6'1", junior Mason Carey. Number 12, 6'1", junior Trey Heitkamp. Number 20, a 6'3", junior Derek Madden. And rounding out the lineup, 6'2", senior number 32, Hayden Hulskamp. All starting lineups brought to you by Emerson Climate Technologies. And for the Jackson Center Tigers, a 6'2", senior, number four, Nolan Fark. A 5'10", a 5'10", senior, number 12, Jace Mullenauer. A 6'2", senior, number 15, Grant Elkert. A 6'0", senior, number 24, Bryson Roberts. And rounding out the line of a 6'3", senior, the man in the middle, number 34, Camden Reese. The Indiana Rockets are coached by longtime head coach Nate Barthorst, and the Jackson Center Tigers are coached by Scott Elkert. Again, all starting lines brought to you by Emerson Climate Technologies. Let's take a look at our keys to the game brought to you by Keyhole Pizza in Newport, Ohio. First, Jeff, let's take a look for the Anna Rockets. Well, Anna has to match the intensity and the physicality that they know Jackson Center is going to bring not only from their players, but also their coach. Uh, Mr. Elkert in his 28th season, very intense, really gets a lot of his players. Also, Anna needs to own the paint. Got to make sure they don't let buckets get off in there and they make sure they rebound the ball very well against Jackson and have good ball movement on offense. It all starts with good, hard cuts. Force the Rockets to defend. And for the Jackson Center Tigers, they need smart decisions with basketball and handling their defensive ball pressure they know Anna's going to give them. They also want to limit Anna's dribble penetration. Not real big are the Rockets, so they want to knock down that penetration to the basket and play a good 32 minutes of offense or end defense as they get a good as the Rockets will get a good start here in the opening tip. Yeah, I get a nice tip down to Hayden Hillscamp, one of the four returning letter winners on this Rocket team as they start out 2-0 on the first National Bank Think First scoreboard. You mentioned that last key to the game for the Tigers, 32 minutes of basketball. Yeah. You saw them last week. They didn't maybe make it 32, did they? No, and they struggled that fourth quarter. Only scoring eight points. They left 19 points to the Rushi Raiders in the fourth quarter. But they're going to have some good offense tonight as they start out Jace Mullenhauer with the basket. Boy, a great start for each of these teams. Although Anna's first possession was more in transition, this will be the first time the Rockets face a defensive unit from the Tigers. But both teams successful on their first touch. Shot clanks off the iron there from Heitkamp. Rebound down to Fark. Fark goes to the right side, cutting on the Mullenhauer on the inside. Mullenhauer patented shot from the corner. It's swatted out by Elkert. Goes back to Elkert. Elkert puts it up. A little miscommunication on who it went out of, and it will cost the Rockets two points for Jackson Center. Basketball up Mason Carey up to Heitkamp left side. High camp rotating the basketball to Hayden Heels Camp. Heels Camp running that brace on his left arm. Ball back over to High Camp on the left side. Rockets moving and cutting. Ball back up over to Madden in the corner over to Siegel. Back out over to Carey. Back out to High Camp. Heels Camp. Rockets being patient here. Pretty good defense so far by the Tigers, as would be expected. They play very good man-to-man defense. That is a trademark of this Tiger basketball club. High camp being patient, trying to go around Reese. And that's going to be a reach on Bryson Roberts. And he made body contact there with Hules Camp. Just in the wrong lane defensively as he lunged for the ball with a jab with his arm in the same lane as the Anna Rocket and commits to foul out front. First foul of the ball game. Mason Carey with the basketball. Carey a junior on this team. Carey trying to go to the basket. Carey spins on the inside. Lane cut off by Camden Reese. You won't see too many people play better defense than Camden Reese will on the inside. Really playing away from the basket. Rockets patient. High camp. Moves the ball back up over to Madden. Madden back out to Carey. Long possession here for Anna. 
And we're going to get a legal screen. Yep. Yep. So a turnover there for Anna. 5.39 to go in the first quarter, 4-2. to two. The Tigers ahead of the Rockets. Derek Madden, 6'3", junior for the Rockets, picks up his first foul. And one thing Jackson Center seeing some pressure here. It's one thing really, too, with uh, Kellen Riker out and kind of been figuring who's going to handle bring the ball up. They struggled a little bit with pressure from the Raiders last Friday. Grant Elkert with the basketball. Elkert on the exchange to Roberts. He drives baseline. Roberts off balance. Clanks off the iron. Reese skies in for the rebound. Falls down to Fark. He pulls the trigger. Got it. Nolan Fark with the three. It's a 7-2 Tiger advantage. What a nice tip there by, you mentioned it, Reese, I believe, to keep it alive. That second look, that second opportunity, a big one there for the Tigers. Not only do they score, but knock down a three-point bucket. Mason Carey with the ball on the right side. Gets the ball up. That three launched by Siegel. And there's going to be a foul. He called on Grant Elkert. He called it on the floor. And he will. And the Rockets will get the ball right out in front of the, some Anna and Jackson Center fans mixed in there. First sub in the game, Drew Dosek. Coming in for the Rockets. Carey with the ball in the backcourt. Carey goes back out left side to Dosek. Ty or the Rockets really patient tonight. Well, they've not had many opportunities. It's been pretty good defensive presence by the Tigers. There's a turnover against Anna, but uh, you got to be patient. You know, Jackson Center is definitely going to make you work for it. And sometimes that defensive pressure forces you into frustration. Maybe some four shots you can't fall into that mindset. You just got to be patient, take what they give you, and make them work defensively, wear them down. And good point, Jeff. And struggling with that early is the Rockets. They got that opening tip, but ever since, it's been a 7-0 Jackson Center run with 431 here to go in the first quarter. Fark out near the Paul the Tiger logo. Back out to Reese. Reese looking to get it on the inside. Back out to Fark. Fark right side over to Elkert. He's got an opening on the inside. Stops, pops, fires, and shot is no good. Mullenauer skies in for the rebound, puts it up. Shot no good, and the Rockets going to be called for a travel as the Tigers will retain possession. It's going to be another look here. They had two shots there, and basically the Rockets can't clear the glass. They get the rebound, but kind of tie it up, so they give it right back. So Jackson Center, another opportunity here to be successful in this possession. Defense on the inbound. They're going to have to get it out to Roberts. Back out over to Elkert on the right side. Elkert going against Dosek. Elkert gets around Dosek over to Fark. Fark fires the three from the corner. Got it. Nolan Fark hits that patented three. It's a 10-0 Tiger run. It's a precision strip time out by Coach Nate Barhorst. We'll take it with him. Our score, Jackson Center 10 and a 2. We'll be back here next on NKT Elko Sports. CarriageWorks has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. CarriageWorks thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top-of-the-line technology. CarriageWorks now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. CarriageWorks has a brand new top-of-the-line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. There's no job too big or too small for CarriageWorks. We are certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. Kemmler Orthopedic Center is focused on a personalized caring approach to treat all aspects of orthopedics, including total joint replacement, shoulder reconstruction, stem cell injections, and more. Dr. James Kemmler and Jed Cooney, certified PA, are dedicated to providing the best orthopedic care in the Grand Lake region. Kemmler Orthopedic Center has offices located in Salina and Van Wert, along with extended evening hours. To schedule an appointment, call our office at 419-586-5760. Back here on NK Telco Sports, the Jackson Center Tigers lead the Anna Rockets 10 to two coming out of the precision strip timeout. Good start, you know, Anna gets that bucket right away and you know, a good start for Anna, but all of a sudden it's been Jackson Center since. You take away that opening tip transition, lay it by the Rockets, it's been all Tigers. They've shot four for eight from the field. They've already recorded a couple offensive rebounds that have kept those possessions alive. So about every time they've crossed half court, they've scored. And it's Rockets now with a, a handful of turnovers, three, and just two shots have been taken. And remember, that first one was a layup, just one of the field goal attempt 
here and almost four minutes gone here in the first quarter. Lucas Hartle in the lineup for Jackson Center out of that timeout. Also in is Breed Plattfoot. Tigers going to go about eight deep in their lineup. The basketball, Madden. Madden looking to go up against Mullenhauer. He's got to rotate the basketball to the corner. Three ball is no good by the Rockets. Mullenhauer gets it out and he's running. Out to Fark. Fark in transition. Shot is good. Count it and one for Nolan Fark. He's got eight. Boy, everything working right for the Tigers. They're just doing it on all aspects of the game right now. And that time in transition, able to not only score, draw the foul, make the bucket, a chance for a three-point play. Into the lineup for the Rockets is Carter Pogue and Carter Siegel. So two Carters, Pogue with a K, and Siegel with a, uh, has a C in their Carter. As Fark will try to complete the three-point play, and he misses it. Ball goes out off the Rockets, so I guess a good consolation prize for Coach Scott Elkert's squad. They'll keep it. Almost could have had a foul maybe on Reese on the rebound, but to his length, able to prevent the, you know, him from getting called for contact. But a they missed a free throw, which would have been a three-point play. Now they can build on that to make it a four or a five, and it turns out it'll be a four-point play. Nolan Fart on fire. Four In, for four from yeah, the field. Yeah, ten points for him. And the senior off to a great start, and it's an Anna turnover. So everything clicking for the Tigers. Yes, well said. And the Farks having a phenomenal first quarter. He had a couple threes in that corner over by the pet band section and scored back-to-back two-point baskets. His last touches of the basketball, last possession. When you see Camden Reese right there, 6-3, just kind of a, you know, a solid rock down there in the post. He brings that basketball. He had a clear lane to the basket, and he gets fouled there by Trey Heitkamp. And Reese at the line for two free throws. Reese misses the first one. Reese yet to score. He only had two points in that game against Rushi on Friday, but he made a, he did a really nice job on defense of, against Braylon Cardano, one of the Raiders' more premier players. He had a really nice game defensively as he splits the pair from the line. He's got his first point of the night. 15-2 Tigers on the first National Bank Tink first scoreboard. Rockets need to get some sort of offense going. Now, easier said than done, obviously, against a very stingy, tight, well-disciplined defense of the Tigers, but got to get some buckets, so, you know, got to get some offense gelling. And there's just been no clear lanes for Anna to get the basketball on the inside. Pogue with the basketball, back out to Siegel, left side. Ball goes to Carey, Carey trying to get around Platfoot, spins, spins on the inside, throws the basketball away. Very good defense there. The Tigers just not giving any lanes there to get anything in. And we got a timeout. It's a 30-second timeout. It gives us a chance to thank our sponsors here. Some of our additional sponsors are Burke Petroleum, Chiltex LLC, Cy Schwederman, Dickman Supply, Hometown Opportunity, Hulesman Automotive, Park National Bank, Securecom, and the St. Henry Bank are keys to the game. We're brought to you by Keyhole Pizza. Scoreboard sponsor, First National Bank. Starting lineup sponsors, Emerson Climate Technologies. This timeout's brought to you by Precision Strip. Jeff and I, at the end of this game, will pick our NK Telco player of the game. And our Jackson Center Live View sponsor is Allen Ball Insurance. Now, back here, you know, you know, at this, you have to have it side of the cat. It's a 15-0 run here for the Jackson Center Tigers, and just been a dominant game here tonight for Coach the defense squad. has been the problem for the Rockets. They've had three field goal attempts. Again, the first one was an opening off the opening tip layup. Other than that, just two shots taken in almost six minutes of basketball, and credit that to the again disciplined, well designed defense communication. You know, all the all the things you need for good defense has been what the Rockets have. Um, done a fine job. They've limited dribble penetration. One of the keys of the game for the coach Elkert mentioned. Done a fine job. Platfoot on the inside. Shot no good. He tips it back out to Fark. And Fark throws it away into the Jackson Center crowd. One of the rare times that they haven't scored, but they had another offensive rebound. Another chance to be successful on this possession, but they do commit their second turnover of the quarter. Anna currently with five turnovers. 
Ball goes on the right side, High Camp. High Camp looking for a cutter, gets out Hules Camp left side over to Carey. Carey moves the basketball to Siegel, back over to Hules Camp. Hules Camp looking for a teammate, intercepted, and Mullenhauer came down awkwardly. He's gonna gingerly walk up the floor. Hope he's okay. Maybe just kind of misstepped. And he seems to be fine running through the offense. Hopefully he drives to the basket, tries to kick it out. Camden Reese intercepts the pass. Back out to Mullenhauer. He drives on the inside and he seems to be okay at least. Good thing for Jackson Center as Mullenhauer gets the bucket. Whatever was bothering him, he got rid of it. That was a nice move, kind of a hop, step, jump, and more importantly, finished it off the glass. Flatfoot gets called for the reach on the inside. And yeah, I've, I think I've done that too before where you jump up and you kind of fall, but you don't really twist your ankle. It just kind of feels funny for kind of about five seconds and then you get back to normal. Well, it always makes you feel better when you are able to go down to court, make a great play offensively, score a bucket, and then come out and take a break uh, from you get a high five or a slap from your coach. So yeah, hopefully it doesn't uh, linger and it looks like he's fought through that. Bryson Roberts. Yeah, Bryson Roberts back in and there's going to be a foul on the floor for the Jackson Center Tigers, I believe, or no, they're going to say it's a shooting foul. Camden Reese, I believe, picks up the personal foul. Yep. Yes. Yep. So His first, team fourth. Yep. Three team fouls against the Rockets as Heitkamp to the line, trying to snap the streak of 17 consecutive Tiger points. He's going to have to wait here another little bit. Hayden Hulskamp had the basket on the first, very first play of the game. 59.8 seconds left. Heitkamp hits the free throw. Well, about almost eight minutes, uh, seven minutes in between scores for the Rockets. They scored the first three or four seconds of the game, and here just about with a minute to play in the eight uh, in the first quarter, able to get a, a free throw to drop. Bryson Roberts with the basketball. Roberts right or left side over to flat foot, and there's a foul. It's tough time, Anna, trying to feel those screens out that the Tigers are setting. They, they foul away from the ball. Carter oh. Pogue picks up the foul. Each team now with four personal fouls. So. A good chance, you think, Brandon, this 41 seconds will be held and run offense for the Tigers? I, feel, I was about ready to yes. say it before they blew the whistle yeah. that they might just run it down and force the Rockets to fight through screens, which can be frustrating. Yeah. And, and it's been a head game so far here in the first quarter. It's been a frustrating you know, quarter for Anna offensively. So maybe that's maybe they might do that. Well, almost a near steal by Mace uh, by Carey. And I think they let him get away with the travel. Otherwise, it would have been a foul. So I think they just let it go. Hartle in the corner. Hartle drives to the basket. Hartle with a tough take and a 19-point quarter for Jackson Center. Well, they took their first best shot, first best shot in Lucas Hartle. A nice move baseline. A lot of quickness there from Hartle. And again, he finishes under control, able to get his shoulder square, get a nice shot off the glass. Carey spins, clanks off the iron. No shot will be able to be put up. It's a 19-3 Jackson center advantage after eight minutes of play here at the Habitat of the Cat. We'll step aside, come back with the second quarter of action here next on NK Toko Sports. We are here and here, and here. Minster Bank is everywhere, providing every banking service that you need to keep your financial life in order. Whether you are on the go or stopping by one of our branches, Minster Bank is here for you. We proudly support the communities where you live. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. Unpack your potential with a career at Pratt Industries. Working at Pratt Industries is more than a job. It's a sustainable career. Pratt Industries to me is a job. It's, it's my career. It's the way I put food on my table, but I love what I do. We offer competitive pay, excellent benefits, and opportunities for career advancement. To apply, visit careers.prattindustries.com. Back here on NK Toko Sports, beginning a second quarter of action here between Jackson Center and Anna and all Tigers that first quarter, Jeff. And like I said, we talked about it during the quarter, executing on all three phases, offense, defense, and quote, transition slash special teams. They've done it well. 
They shot eight of 13 from the field in the first quarter. Of those five misses, they were able to keep some of them alive and ultimately score in that possession. But eight of 13 from the field, that includes two of two from three-point range, both those by Nolan Fox. For the Rockets, just four field goal attempts. The only one they made was a layup off the opening tip. And uh, it's a tough battle for the Rockets right now, facing a good defensive unit of the Tigers and a 16-point deficit. It's going to be a tough job for them to fight back into this contest with offense for them struggling at least for the first eight minutes. Each team going to start to believe about the original starting five. It's Grant Elkert, deep three, testing his luck. It's no good. Rockets push the basketball up. It's back over to Siegel. And on the right side, it's High Camp. High Camp back over to Hules Camp, picked off Bryson Roberts. Roberts on the other end and lays it in. Well, there's a special teams portion of this thing they've been executing on. They get a cross-court pass that was stolen by the Tigers and then execute, not only get the steal, but execute, capitalize with a bucket. Inside to the basket near travel. Madden with the basketball. Kicks it back out over to Hules Camp. Hules Camp right side, height Camp. Trying to set up on the inside. And the Tigers get a turnover. Nice hustle play, even though they didn't have to do it. Yeah, I thought it was going <laughs> to go out on the Rockets anyways, but the Tigers save it, force the second turnover of the second quarter. Reed Platfoot on the inside, finishes. Nice assist, going to go there to Lucas Heitkamp to Reed Platfoot. And we got a timeout, Coach Nate Barhorst, and it's a 30-second timeout. All timeouts brought to you by Precision Strip. We'd like to remind you that NK Toko Sports and its sponsors are pleased to bring you replays of tonight's high school varsity basketball action on NK Toko Channel 3 or on HD on Channel 503. You can catch the replay of this game Sunday, December 11th at 3 p.m. and Monday, December 12th at 5 p.m. You can also watch more games on demand through YouTube, Facebook, and at nktoko.com forward slash sports. Again, we'll have all Jackson Center home games for the boys and girls this year. So thank you for subscribing to NK Toko Sports. And it's been a really good start again for Jackson Center. Just continuing going on and on. 23-3. to And it's been a really well executed game plan by Coach Elker's squad. It has. They came in. Um, they knew what they wanted to do. And they pretty much executed on the game plan. And a lot of it's not anything special than what it is every year. You know, good defense ball control on offense and just sound discipline behavior on the court and that's what the Tigers do and it's paying off here again coach Elkert in his 28th season as head coach and Nate Barhorst 12 years yeah. as head coach of Anna so veteran coaches but uh, for coach Scott Elkert the athletic director 28 seasons as head coach. Bart gets the steal and they're the two longest serving coaches in the Shelby County Athletic League at their respective schools and Park will shoot two yeah because over the county, yeah. The, I mean, Elkert's really the dean of Shelby County basketball, they say, and you know, Boris has been there 12 years, and they're the I two longest. Would, yeah, other than when Bremigen stepped down mm -hmm. at Rushi, that took yeah. him off the list. Yeah, there's, now he's back at his girls' coach. Yes, and Bakken's uh, Coach Groves in his second season, Spencer, Spencer Cardonia in his first season, Corey Britton's in his ninth yeah. at Fort Laramie, so they're the two longest-serving longest head coaches. Nate Boris, of course, and Anna graduate. Actually, Coach Elkert's son, Trey, is a coach over at Wapak, which they'll play Saturday night against the Minster Wildcats. I know I'm on the call for that game. As Fark hits two free throws, it's 25-3. to three. A dozen points in the ball game for Nolan Fark. Yeah, missed 10 in the first quarter. Ball on the right side, Madden out over to Carey. Out over as Anna rotates the basketball. Alex Shappy in the lineup, number 34. Alex Shappy. And the Rockets turn it over again. Fark in transition. Weaves in and out. Comes back around. Fark with a dozen points. Back out to Camden Reese. Reese on the inside to Mullenhauer. Mullenhauer kicks it out in the corner. A little miscommunication from the Tigers on who's getting the ball. Reese tries to get it over to Mullenhauer. He pulls it back out near the Tiger logo. Loses the basketball. Kicks it out in the corner. They forgot about Fark, and that's a mistake. Nolan Fark with 15 points in this first half. His third made triple. That time, from this, the opposite complete side, he made his first two from in the first quarter. We're on the other right corner. This time, the first here, the second quarter from the left corner. But Fark is on fire. You mentioned the 15 points. And he's not missed a field goal. His only blemish has been a missed free throw. Carry off balance. Just lost the shot. 
Reese up ahead, Elker. Elker in transition, waiting, waiting. Gets the ball on the inside to Mullenhauer. Gets around the defense, tickles the twine. And that's a two for Jace Mullenhauer. Six points now for Jace Mullenhauer, the 5'10 senior. He mentioned he missed a game-winning shot opportunity last week against the Raiders, but uh, plays like that are tough to defend. He spun, yeah. he elevates, he kind of drifted back a little bit. Boy, he's quick on his feet. He gets a steal down here. And that's going to be a foul against Anna. Madden throws his hands up in frustration. Rockets is struggling to take care of that basketball. Just not those passing passes hasn't, haven't been very crisp from the Rockets. Correct. Uh, again, team speed by the Tigers. They're smart. You don't have to always be the quickest person on the basketball court. If you kind of know, anticipate what's coming and where your placement is, and if you have that lined up to begin with, Sometimes those interceptions or deflections are a little bit easier, even though you may be not the quickest, but Jackson Center has a lot of athletic defensive players. Makes it even that more difficult. So they have it between the years and they have it also physically. Evan Myers in the ball game for Anna. There's a, well, the ball's tipped out of bounds. Shabby maybe got away with one there. He deflects it out. There was some body contact. It'll just simply be ball out of bounds for the Tigers. 30 to three, our score. 426 to go to the halftime break been an offensive outburst for the Tigers as they throw the basketball away. Anna has a fast break. Keeps the basketball in the corner. Shappy had a nice JV game, but overshoots that one. Reese coming down the court, wide open Mullenhauer. Mullenhauer bodies his way to the basket. He's fouled and will shoot two. Well run, fast break there by Jackson Center. Evan Meyer is going to pick up his first foul, but yes, you know, Jack Center commits a turnover of their last possession. Anna, you think, is going to have a maybe a chance in transition. But the Rockets' other four players get back so quickly and fill the gaps. Nothing easy for the, for the Rockets. They sell over a long three-point miss. And off that rebound, boom, guess who scored in the other end in transition? The, the Tigers. They don't score. I mean, you might as well count as a score. They drew the foul, and now they're making free throws. So counting this as a scoring opportunity in transition or off that transition. Eight points now for Jace Mullenauer. 32 to 3 our score with four minutes to go to the halftime intermission. Well, out deep three for Siegel. Got it. First field goal since the very first play of the game for the Anna Rockets comes at the hands of Carter Siegel. And that was a tough shot. You know, it's, that was a couple steps behind the three-point line, but Siegel, the 6'2 senior, able to get his first attempt to drop down. Going Fark with the basketball, spins, fires, in and out. And there's a foul on Jackson Center, so now a little bit of momentum for the guys in green. Well, they're going to need a lot of momentum, and well defended there against Fark. He came within a fraction of, of burying that shot, and then if, he, if that goes in, it's like, what else can you do? Because I thought they defended Fark pretty well, had a hand in his face, and Fark shot all but went down, but uh, that's his first field goal miss of the game for the 6'2 senior Fox. 32 to 6, 325 to go to halftime. My name is Brandon Coverman alongside me, Jeff Hinchin. Friday night basketball in the Shelby County Athletic League. Rockets rotating the basketball. Ball back out to High Camp to Shappy. Shappy gets the ball back out to Siegel again. Clanks off the iron, no good. Mullenhauer gets the rebound. Reese looking for a cutting Lucas Heitkamp, and he loses the basketball. Nice play on the get back by Evan Myers. He hustled back, was able to get a hand on the basketball, avoid the foul, and more importantly, strip the ball away to prevent a Tiger opportunity. 6-1 sophomore Evan Myers. Nice play defensively. Mullenhauer gets a screen, shoots good. And the Tigers just simply can't miss this first half. 11 for Mullenauer. Well, he's had a great game and a, a great second quarter as well. Seven points in the quarter and another three-point made bucket for the Tigers. They've only missed one opportunity from that range here in the game. Carey on the inside trying to work his luck against Reese. Steps back, shoots in and out. And the officials are going to talk here. What they're saying over here. There's blood, I think. Maybe on... Yeah, I think there's blood. High camp Trey will come out. Uh, Looks like he's got a maybe a, a bloody lip. Yeah, that's, I was going to say, that's what I could see from up here. And they stopped the fast break. Got him out. They really emphasize, too, 
that's really one thing they're trying to emphasize, and that blood on the jersey as kind of a hazard just to get them out, get the kids out of the game right away. Camden Reese gets the ball in the backcourt. Reese going to the basket. Back out, high camp, wide open. Bryson Roberts from that right wing. Shot is no good. And it's going to go out on Fark. It was either that or it's going to be a foul. And I think they'll just take the ladder, or they'll take the former, I should say, compared to the ladder. And they'll take the ball out of bounds, what you yeah. meant to say? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm I'm not yeah, sure if it was former yeah, or ladder or not, yeah. but uh, you're right. Sometimes it could be a foul or just, you know, give the ball to the, to uh, the Rockets, and that's what happened. It looks like the Rockets are trying to really get the ball to Mason Carey. who so they're trying to run the offense through. Nothing there. Rockets missed the layup on the inside. It was a good screen. It's one of the few times they've, they've broken down the Tigers' defense, and Myers shot just a little bit too strong off the glass, and Shabby picks up his foul. But, uh, yeah, nice cut, nice pass. But the third step of that process just doesn't go down for the Rockets. It'll be a one-and-one one opportunity here for Reed Platfoot. Again, this, this Tiger team has gone about eight deep, and they really their, their bench has been Reed, Reed Platfoot, Lucas Heitkamp, and Cooper Hart, and uh, Cooper Hartle, or sorry, Lucas Hartle. As they're still waiting to get Kellen Reichert back from that injury. Don't really know the timetable. Again, he hurt that foot in the cross-country season. Was projected to possibly be Shelby County run of the year. Missed the county run. Ran at districts. Qualified for regionals. But the injury was just too much. He couldn't finish and, and, and do regionals, which is unfortunate because he would have been probably an all-Ohio runner on the cross-country circuit. 145 to go here in the first half. Tigers up 30. Yes, you read that right, up 30, or you heard that right. And High Camp fouled on the inside. That's the last foul to give for the Tigers. Camden Reese picks up the second foul against him, as Brandon mentioned, the sixth team foul. Past two possessions where the Rockets have got a look, if you will, to some offense going towards the basket. Meyer missed the first, uh, Myers missed the first opportunity, and this time they draw a foul as they were getting ready to maybe Get a catch on the interior. Ball in the corner. Rockets control it. Rockets cross court pass. Back out over to High Camp. High Camp to Hules Camp. Corner to Myers. Myers gets it down low to Siegel. Likes his matchup against High Camp. Goes up, shoots, and it's good. Five points in the yep. game. Five points in this quarter for a 6 2 senior, Carter Siegel. What? Fark going up. Fark through contact. Shot is no good. Hillscamp pulls down the rebound with a minute to go to halftime. Hillscamp with the ball back over to Myers. 15 seconds to go. Myers left side. Myers looking to rotate the basketball. Gets it out of over to High Camp. Right side. Back over to Siegel. Hillscamp. Left side. Myers. 38 seconds to go. Back over to Hules Camp. Kind of a long possession here for Anna as they're moving and cutting. Well, they just make you work for your, they make you really run your offense, and that consumes a lot of clock. And everything's kind of been on the perimeter. Fadeaway shot, no good. Platfoot leaks out behind the defense, but it's picked off there by Trey Heitkamp. Ball in the corner to Myers. Back out over to Siegel. Siegel shot takes the long three. Makes a nice move on the inside, and he gets a foul. A red plat foot really coming out too far. He gave him a lane and took it to the basket and got fouled. Nice recognition by Siegel. Had plat foot on him, a 6'5 sophomore. Able to get him out a little bit and then was able to attack the basket. Plat foot tries to recover. Again, had about three or four inches on Siegel, but drew the personal foul. In the meantime, that's Reed Platfoot's second foul. Free throws for Siegel. Siegel's first free throw is good. Carter Siegel now with six. Grant Elkert, Bryson Roberts back in. Carter Pogue back in for the Rockets. Eight point nine seconds left here in the half. Siegel hits it. Seven points in the quarter for the Rockets. Them all coming at the hands of Carter Siegel. Roberts loses the basketball in the backcourt. Mullenauer up quickly ahead to the basket and is fouled. So Jace Mullenauer will shoot two. He just got to point 
from point A to point B so much faster the defense couldn't even really recover to try to draw the contact. Instead, because of the speed, the quickness, the shiftiness of Molinar, they can pick up a personal foul against Myers, and that'll be a free throw opportunity here, a one-on-one -on -one with just two seconds left. That's a really good way of saying it. Really good shiftiness, so to speak, there by Mullenhauer. Good athleticism bringing that ball up the floor, and Mullenhauer hits the first free throw. He's got 12 now. I said one on one. It's a two shot foul, but nonetheless, he makes both. And again, Jackson shot those free throws again really well against the Raiders on Friday. I believe they were in the 70, so over 70%, as the shot at the horn is no good. Our score at halftime is Jackson Center 38 and a 10. We'll step aside. And take a break, bringing you the first half stats and recap and bringing you the second half of action here next on NK Toko Sports. Are you looking for a rewarding career? Lincoln Electric Automation in Coldwater and Fort Loramie supplies top-of-the-line automation systems to manufacturers. Lincoln Electric Automation routinely develops its team through hiring and by offering advanced technical training. We understand that every employee matters and every role contributes to the success of our business. We offer advancement opportunities, competitive wages, and benefit packages. Visit LincolnElectric.com and get on track to a better career and a better future. New Knoxville Supply Company, the supply source for residential, commercial, and industrial jobs. We specialize in plumbing products from many name brands, electrical products from replacing a light switch to rewiring an entire house, heating, air conditioning, and geothermal products, sheet metal ductwork, installations, and service. We are now housing more inventory so all the hardware items you need to complete the job are available right away. New Knoxville Supply. Stop in, call, or check us out online at newknoxvillesupply.com. Whether you do business from a corner store or a corner office, there is one asset your business cannot do without. The internet. Everything from sales and marketing, training and shipping, PR, HR, and R&D, your business relies on a fast, reliable, and secure connection. And now, it's more important than ever to partner with an internet provider you can trust. Get Flight Fiber for Business, backed by local tech support from NK Telco. Call today. Hi, I'm Mallory. My grandpa's been making the world's worst pizza for 30 years. That doesn't look like the world's worst pizza. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bomb. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course, it's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Keyhole Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. Back here at the Habitat of the Cat in Jackson Center High School. And after one half of basketball, after 16 minutes, it's a controlling 38 to 10 lead for the Jackson Center Tigers. Let's take a look at our first half stats and here with them is Mr. Jeff Henson. Thank you, Brandon. And uh, again, a first half dominated by the Jackson Center Tigers. They've done everything spot on. And uh, when you do that, it makes it very difficult for the other team. And uh, let's look at the numbers. Field goal shooting for the Anna Rockets. First half, two of eight from two point range, one of three from three point range. That's a total of three of 11. Just 11 attempts for 27% for the Jackson Center Tigers. Nine of 16 from two point range. Four of six, a very good four of six from three point range. More impressively, 13 of 22 overall for just under 60%. And as I mentioned earlier, of the few misses they've had, a couple of them they've kept alive with offensive boards and kept that possession alive and later scored. So they've been very efficient. Free throw shooting, Anna. Three of four from the free throw line. Jackson Center, 11 attempts. They make eight, so very good shooting by the Tigers from the foul line. Rebounding numbers look like this. Just five rebounds for the Rockets. Of course, Jackson Center didn't miss many shots, and Anna didn't take many, so there wouldn't be many rebounds for Anna to get. Five boards for the Rockets and 14 for the Tigers. And another key stat, turnovers. A dozen for the Rockets. 12 first-half turnovers, just three for the Jackson Center Tigers. And you add all up, and it's a... A 38-10 score right now. Leading scores in the game for the Anna Rockets. Seven from Carter Siegel. All those in the second quarter. Two from Hayden Hulskamp. And one from Trey Heitkamp. Their total of 10 for the Rockets. And for the Tigers, 15 from Nolan Fox. 13 from Mullenauer. Three from Reed Platfoot. Nice backdoor cut and bucket by Mullenauer. Give him now 15. Two from Hartle. Two from Elkert. 
two from Roberts and one from Camden Reese. Their total of 37. Uh, bucket for Trey Height. Camp out the halftime break for Anna. Good sign after it was really just a struggle offensively, and they get a turnover now. You know, I said that backwards, did yeah. I not? Sorry, or correct me when I make those double yeah, mistakes. Yeah, I, I was, I was, I had, waiting, I I was had, waiting on the end there. I had my sheets <laughs> backwards, so apologize. That last bucket for the Rockets went to Trey Height Camp. He gets the first bucket of the half. I was waiting for a little dead silence. I'm correct you, Jeff. <laughs> I didn't flip my sheets around, and I was saw the numbers, so my fault. So there's a timeout quickly taken as we start the second half. Coach Elker, I think, getting on his team and the Precision Strip timeout. So, again, we'd like to thank our sponsors here on NK Telco. They're Burke Petroleum, Chiltex LLC, Seitz Reederman, Dickman Supply, Hometown Opportunity. Hulsman Automotive, Park National Bank, Securecom, and the St. Henry Banker Keys to the Game are brought to you by Keyhole Pizza. Scoreboard sponsor, First National Bank, Think First. Starting lineup sponsor, Emerson Climate Technology. This timeout is brought to you by Precision Strip and our player of the game, which Jeff and I will select at the end, is brought to you by NK Telco. Our Jackson Center Live View sponsor is Allen Ball Insurance. So 38-12 out of the Precision Strip timeout. The Jackson Center Tigers, again, all in control. Anna playing better here lately. Yeah, they had a better second quarter, at least the second half of it. Got some shots to drop and played a little bit better defense, held on to the basketball. A little back screen for Mullenauer, shot no good. Again, this is a very senior-heavy Jackson Center team. A very veteran roster for Coach Scott Elker. That's the three from Carey is good. Mason Carey gets in the box score. Five points here to start the quarter. Good start for the Rockets. 2-2 from the field. Remember, they only took 11 shots in the first 16 minutes of basketball. They've taken two shots here in the first minute plus of the third quarter and made both of them. 38-15, so 5-0. Jackson center run to start. Fark pulls back. Shot no good. Rebound goes down to the Rockets. Madden left side. Madden gets that ball punched away, but it falls back in the Rockets' hands, and Mullenhauer going to get called for the reach around. Just about a step late there for Mullenauer and personal foul against the Tigers. Again, a little momentum here for Anna now just really after that struggle of our first half. Coach Barworth has got to be happy with how his, his team has played these last few minutes. Jackson struggling to get the ball in. Elkert pokes it in the backcourt. Siegel will retrieve it. Siegel will lock it up across the timeline. Madden with the basketball on the right side. And there's a foul going through the basket. We'll call it an arm bar foul, I believe, on Bryson Roberts, team second of the half. And the third on Roberts, maybe? No, that's the first, first. team, actually, starting the second foul on second. Roberts. I was reading it backwards. There. We're going to say that foul went against Anna, I guess, on the screen, maybe? Coach Barhorse a little confused. I'm a little confused. I, I was watching Camden Reese, unless unless Heitkamp pushed off on Reese. Reese was like blocking his path. Maybe they called hit on Heitkamp then for kind of pushing off on Reese. Shot by Elkert, no good. Rebound Mullenhauer. Roberts and Mullenhauer play a little pitch and catch. Nice defense by the Rockets on the inside. Get a stop. The shot was taken by. Ooh. Carry through the lane. Oh, that shot was that shot was taken by Mullenauer. Okay. Sorry. Yep. Roberts right side three ball. No good. Anna trying to push the fast break. High camp. Right wing. He stops to the basket. Boy, he's had a couple of possessions here. You know, misses on this end. Anna's got some quick shots, but unable to convert. Or oh, that had been a couple scoring opportunities and really start, you know, still a long way to go. But boy, you talk about momentum, they would have had it. Get in another four unanswered points. Rockets playing better defense here. Jackson's also gone a little cold from the field. He's not scored yet. Three minutes into this third quarter. Reese takes it to the baseline. Reese finds a nice cutting. Mullenhauer, what's they're going to call? They're going to call it a charge. That was a good job. I thought that Hayden Hillscamp was there. And as Mullenhauer went to the basket, it was a nice pass by Camden Reese. He maybe doesn't score a lot, but boy, he passes the ball well. He saw the cutter and uh, just too much momentum for Mullenhauer to shut it down before it gets picked up for the his second foul, the second turnover of the third quarter. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. 38-15, Jackson Center on our first National Bank. Think first scoreboard. Myers, gives up, who's in the lineup, gives up the basketball. Left side, Siegel, signal, signaling for his offense to move. So they're trying to get something for Madden. 
Goose Camp on the inside working on Roberts. Back out to Siegel. Siegel just slips to the basket. Nice, nice move. move by Hayden Yulescamp. The slip screen to the basket. And Anna on a 7-0 run. Got a nice pass from Siegel. And then even a better finish by Hillscamp. Hillscamp 6-2, but uh, used the rim, if you will, to help protect the shot and come up on the other side with a nice bucket. Roberts gets the three, breaks the Jackson Center cold spell. They get their first bucket of the second half. Well, that was a big bucket by Roberts. He'd miss his last three-point shot. And it was on a bit of a run, and you try to kind of squelch your shooting woes in the third quarter with a long-distance three-pointer, but Roberts hits it, his fifth point of the game. Highcamp wants the ball on the inside. They're going to call a foul against Jackson Center. Hillscamp demanding that ball on the inside. Likes his matchup against Roberts. I believe the personal foul went on, I thought it went on number four, Nolan Fox. It did. Yeah, it did go on Fark. Yep, Nolan, Nolan Fark with the foul. Lucas Heitkamp, 13 into the ball game for the Rockets. And Reed Platfoot in the lineup as well. Again, trying to provide that depth for the Tigers. Heitkamp with the basketball. Back out over to Myers, right side. Myers gives it to Hillscamp. Hillscamp back out to Heitkamp. Try to get something for Siegel. Well defended by the Tigers. And it's a kickball by Camden Reese. And the Rockets will take it out right in front of their own bench. So 41 to 17, 3.49 to go, third quarter. Brandon Coberman and Jeff Henschen along here on NK Telco Sports. First Saturday in December. Myers with the basketball, right side to Hike Camp. And I get it over to Hills Camp, back over to Myers. Myers to Siegel. Siegel will test his luck with the three, and it falls well short. And that'll get the Jackson Center student section shanting air ball. Siegel had a real nice second quarter, scoring seven points. Hit a three-pointer during that stretch. A couple free throws in the field goal all in the second quarter. That shot, as you mentioned, a little, a little short. and Have to go back to work on defense now for the green shirts. In the lineup, Lucas Heitkamp for the Tigers. Heitkamp trying to go to the basket. Heitkamp. There's two of them that Heitkamp's going to draw. That should be a charge. Call it to charge. And they're going to call it a, a, a up there. There I it agree. is. I thought it was a nice oh. job. Um, I thought Hike Camp now twice has taken charges. And he was in possession. I'm glad the officials looked to make sure they all agree. You don't want to come out signaling body. The other guy's signaling charge. Yep. You make eye contact. And not for sure whose call it, quote, was. But uh, they made the right call. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing with the officials. You know, you get in the swing of the call. You know, two, it's sometimes lucky that, you, that they locked eyes and looked at each other. Because maybe one was like, well, that was my call. And the other was yep. like, that was my call. Yeah, that was a great job by the officials. And I have no problem with it being delayed. You talk it over, yeah. and, hey, what did you see or what did you think? You know, and I thought I saw from up here, I thought, boy, Heitkamp was there. Yeah, yeah and, and, and it's a dead ball either way, so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect the pace of play. So a very good job by the officials. Well done to talk that over no matter what happened, but nice job by them. Platfoot on the inside to Fark. Fark spins around, shot no good. 2.39 to go in the third quarter. Really been kind of an offensive struggle for Jackson. Only three points out the halftime break. Heels camp kicks it out. Siegel. Siegel trying to get a little space. Kicks out high camp. Gets a little body contact. Pushing around. Reese. And that's going to be an offensive foul. High camp extended his hands out. There's not too many people that are going to back down Camden Reese. Camden Reese is pretty solid. As a, he's solid as a rock on the inside. And high camp extended his elbow out there. We're sending his forearm out there. That's a third foul on Trey Heitkamp. He's Brandon, to, when are you going to tell me? I had my notes. It's Nolan Fark. I think I've yeah. been calling him Fox yeah. for short. And um, Well, he's been playing like a Fox. He's yeah. quick and he's a little sly. But now he's been on a cold stretch. Fark, that is. He's missed his last four shots. Yeah. I have to remember, starting off so hot, Fark with the 10 points in the first quarter. Um, had ended up with a nice second quarter, five points, but he's missed his last four mm. field goal attempts. And my apologies, I don't know why we're saying Fox the whole time, but uh, he could play like a Fox yeah. there. Yeah, that, maybe that's his new nickname. Yeah, that's good. He started seeing yeah. T-shirts. Yeah, yeah. Credit me. <laughs> and he had ten points that first quarter. Yep, five in the second, and uh, mm. leads the Tigers right now with a 15 points. Camden Reese gives the ball up over to Platfoot on the inside. Lucas Highcamp, Highcamp. Mullenauer, they throw the basketball away. 
Tigers' first turnover of the third quarter. Just their fourth turnover I have down for them. So take it back. They've had uh, two charges in this quarter. I, do you consider a charge a turnover or just a foul? Or I'd consider it a turnover. Okay, so maybe they've got three turnovers then. but Because uh, you you would consider a push off a, a turnover. When it, I you call know, it a foul. A, a foul and a turnover. Yeah. I would just say it's it's both. Because yep. you're turning the ball over to the other team either way. True. Yeah, okay. I'll go with that. It's an unforced turnover is what I would say. And there's a unforced turnover right there for the Rockets. Yeah, unofficially, keyword unofficially, each team with three turnovers here in the third quarter. But for now, Rockets, they have 15 in a game, and for Anna, just six. No, 40. Anna, Anna scored 19 points in each of the first two quarters. Dave uh, scored three here in the third quarter, so... Reese up ahead. Plattfoot got it. There's a three from Reed Plattfoot. 44 points now. On the, uh, it's a team now for the Tigers. His first made three-point attempt tonight. He now has six points in the ball game for the 6-5 sophomore. Stepping outside and showing his range for the youngster. Again, uh, that Tiger depth being challenged. Like we said, we've mentioned a few times. Kellen Riker out tonight. As the Tigers just really need a win in Shelby County play to try to keep it pace. They have not won a Shelby County League title since 2013, which, you know, it should say, it just says how tough the Shelby County League has been as how good of a consistent team that Jackson Center has been. And Reed Plattfoot gets a block. Myers gets the basketball. Well, Plattfoot hits a three on one end and shows his defense on the other end. Illegal screen. Up against Mason Carey is who that's going to go against. So turnover and a foul. Yeah, I said this. This Tigers team has not won a Shelby County title since 2013. You know, Rushi had their reign. They won five in a row for a while. Anna won a few in a row. Bakken's has won it the last two years. Larmy had a tri championship in there. So Jackson Center trying to trying to get in that get I, that title. Yeah, I would have. I would never have guessed that. I would have yeah. thought they would have had one in between that stretch. But with the teams you've won, I thought, well, yeah, those. You know, then Jackson Center's always got to be a strong second, if, if nothing else, because uh, they've had some good teams. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I would have guessed they would have had a title in there. Mm. But, uh, you know, it's been kind of a, I yeah. take, you know, teams, about three or four teams taking turns at the top. Yeah, and Jackson did make the state final four in 2016. They made the regional final in 2019, and they were supposed slated to play in that regional final in 2020. They have a banner hanging up here for that unfinished season. They had a chance to make it to the state final. So they've had a ton of postseason success. So, you know, it's that, it's that trade-off of, oh, we haven't won a league title in 10 years, but we've had a ton of postseason yes, success. Yep. And that's always when Coach Elkert's team is hitting their stride. And that's probably why I would have assumed they would have had a title in there. But, you know, it's facts. So um, they usually are playing good basketball near the end of the season. is correct, although they you know, had a rough night last weekend against a very good Rushi team on the road. Had a chance to win that game. Came up a bit short and dominating tonight against the Rockets. Ball kicked in the corner. Mullenhauer. Mullenhauer three. Got it. Right before the horn sounds, it's a 30-point lead for Jackson going into the fourth quarter. 47-17. We'll step aside and bring you the last eight minutes of regulation basketball here next on NK Toko Sports. Together, we are family, working safely for our loved ones. We are problem solvers who challenge the status quo and drive improvement. We care about our customer relationships. We stay true to our values, caring and respecting one another. We embrace change as we journey through our career. We are Precision Strip, the world's leading processor of rolled steel and aluminum. Precision Strip, doing the exceptional. At Wilson Health, we're extending care beyond the walls of the hospital with resources designed to keep you in charge of your health. Our independence and connection to the community are unique in a world where big health care strives to act like corporations. Our tools may be the same, but we are different. We're neighbors, friends, and family who truly care about the people who live here. We call it caring without limits, and it's just the beginning of a whole new Wilson Health. CarriageWorks has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. CarriageWorks thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top-of-the-line technology. CarriageWorks now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. CarriageWorks has a brand new top-of-the-line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. 
There's no job too big or too small for CarriageWorks. We're certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. Kemmler Orthopedic Center is focused on a personalized caring approach to treat all aspects of orthopedics, including total joint replacement, shoulder reconstruction, stem cell injections, and more. Dr. James Kemmler and Jed Cooney, certified PA, are dedicated to providing the best orthopedic care in the Grand Lake region. Kemmler Orthopedic Center has offices located in Salina and Van Wert, along with extended evening hours. To schedule an appointment, call our office at 419-586-5760. Back here on NK Telco Sports. Beginning of the fourth quarter of basketball and in that third quarter, better for the Rockets. Seven points that quarter that they got, a 7-0 run, but the Tigers closed down on a 9-0 run. I remember saying that how Anna, I'm sorry, how Jackson Center had scored the first two quarters, 19 points each quarter, and only had three in the third quarter. Well, they finished the third quarter with two made three-point buckets, so they took that three-point scoring margin, got up to nine. They win the quarters as a turnover. They win the scoring quarter, 9-7. to seven. Anna got off to a quick start with 7, kind of faded. Jack Center struggled, but then hit three threes in that period. And again, the last couple by Reed Platfoot. And then in the corner, Jace Mullenauer to kind of finish out the quarter and get their lead and maybe take that momentum that the Rockets did start to generate and kind of take the air out of their balloon. And Anna going to apply a little pressure here. Each team opened up the fourth quarter with a turnover. Fark on the inside. Fark kicks it out. Roberts. Roberts left side. Four seniors and a sophomore on the floor for Jackson Center. Boy, like, Fark is posting up. Oh, nice job. Body control by Fark. And uh, I'll have to ask him. Maybe he'll, he likes the nickname Fox. If I, yeah. I kind of, again, I apologize <laughs> for that. But uh, Fark did a nice job posting up. They recognized it. And. Uh, he draws a personal foul against Anna's number 12, Trey Heitkamp. His fourth foul for Heitkamp. So fart to the line, and he cannot connect on the first free throw. Only had, he does not score yet this second half. He, he has not. Yeah, no, scorching hot first half. Ten in the first, five in the second, 15 is where he ended. And he's, uh, like I said, missed his last four field goals and has missed the first free throw here and able to finally get back into the scoring column. And... I say finally with respect because yeah. he's got 16 in the game. Him and Mullenhauer are tied for the team high. Roberts tipped it, but he got a little body contact as well to constitute a foul call. Bryson Roberts about a half step and then trying to reach through Roberts. He draws contact, and Roberts will pick up his second foul. Stack formation for Mann on the left side of the key. Try to work it in. They work it into Shappy. It's playing. Anna won that JV contest 37-35 on a shot with three seconds to go. In our first contest, there was a freshman game. No score from that game that I got. That I have not got. So balls on the inside. Goes out to Evan Myers. Myers fouled by Elkert. Too much body contact there. That'll be the 16 foul on the Tigers. Grant Elkert, one of those seniors you Brandon mentioned, a senior heavy team. Picks up his third personal foul. He'll stay in the ball game as Platfoot checks out. 6'5 sophomore. Okay, another six, another stack formation from the Anna Rockets. Get the ball up to Siegel. Up over to Dosek. Dosek on the inside, nearly walked. Good defense by the Tigers. Kick it out, finds Hulescamp. Hulescamp cans the... Jump shot there. His sixth point of the game. He had that nice move in the third quarter where he posted up and kind of did a reverse layup to finish. And that time, the 6'2 senior steps out, shows his 15-foot range. Six Fart. points for Heels Camp. Fart kicks out. Mullenhauer in the corner. And the Tigers turn it over. Right side. And the Rockets cough up the basketball. Reese slows it down. Reese looking to go to the basket. Finds Roberts in transition. Three off the mark. My, or Sorry, Siegel comes down with the rebound. Siegel pushes up ahead. Shappy. Shappy looking to move the basketball. Shappy brings it out. Finds Evan Myers. Left side back over to Siegel. Back over to Hills Camp. Right side and Dosek. And Rockets being patient here. Trying to get it on the inside. Picked off. Who is going to say that's off of there? Say that's off of Anna. Well, that's two 
you almost didn't give um, Reese the turnover. He had to turn over the last time possession, stole the ball out around the spike line. That time, good footwork defending Hules camp, able to knock, step around him, avoid the foul, get a deflection, and cause a man a turnover. Now he's bringing the ball down the court. So you know, he maybe doesn't always really score a lot, but he's done a lot in my eyes tonight to help his team be successful. And uh, again, just filling the position to whatever's needed. It seems to be what he does best. Fark, nice spin around move, but just missed it. Elkert fouled as he was skying to the basket. It's going to be the 15 foul on the Rockets. Substitution in the lineup. Trey Heikamp, Mason Carey in the ball game for Anna. Fark will inbound it underneath this team's basket. It's out Camden Reese. Reese drives on the inside over to Mullenauer. Mullenauer spins on the inside. Mullenauer gets that ball picked off. It's Mason Carey. Carey to the basket and is fouled by Grant Elkert. Nice job by Carey anticipating the, the pass and then taking off. He's got some good speed, does Mason Carey, and went right at the basket, challenged the Tiger defender, gets credit, it draws the fourth foul against Grant Elkert and a chance here to kind of still score points off that steal. First free throw is good for Carey. He now has four points in the game, had a three-pointer early in the third quarter, and now getting some points off the steal he earned at the other end playing defense. Carey dips in these fires and hits it. Now substitution in. Lucas Hartle coming back in. Well, you think of Jackson Center, you know, over the years, again, Coach Elkert, 28th season. I always think of defense, and you think yeah. probably Brandon will just throw out a number. Their defensive average per year is what you think that they give up points-wise. I would say it's in the low 30s. Yeah, I would say and right now they're on pace to pad that average. Anna has just 21 points. But uh, there's a third charge in this half called by the Tigers. This time they were picking up the charge of Evan Myers. The other two were by Hills Camp, but another turnover, a charge, a third time they've been whistling for the charge violation. Yeah, and, and, and again, you got to credit Coach Barhorst's team for not quitting. Siegel in the corner, got it. Carter Siegel ten with points. 10 points. Mm. His second three-point made bucket of the game. Two for four from that range tonight. You gotta, Sorry, two for five. No, two for four. You got to admire Coach Barhorst's team for not quitting. And they've played better this second half against a very talented Jackson team. Shot the corner is good for Lucas Hartle. His fifth point of the night for the 5'11 junior, and he's been perfect. Two shots taken, two shots made, a field goal in the first, and a triple here in the fourth. And again, and, and you were saying earlier, yeah, the probably low 30 average, you know, is about what they give up. You typically know if you're going to play a Jackson Center game and you know it's going to be tight, it's going to be a low, low 30s, uh, 40s type of ball game. It's, it's pretty much the epitome of what Shelby County Bass was. It's kind of like Big Ten football in a way. Is a way I like to compare it to. It's nice a nice pass. cut on the inside. Anna offense has been firing on all cylinders. This is Derek Madden with the basket. Give the assist to Evan Myers. Nice dribble drive, drew the defense, and then Madden with a good job getting in the opening and scoring the bucket. Madden his first two points of the game. Nine points this fourth quarter for the Rockets, outscoring the Tigers now 9-4 to four as Molenauer misses the three. I would like for someone to go back and look at the Anna defense over the years, if you will. I would say they're... Defensive points per game given up is in the low 30s. Yeah, you mean the Jackson? Yeah, you mean the Jackson, Jackson defense? Yeah, yeah, Jackson defense. And tonight it's doing it against the end yeah. offense. And Reese trying to take the charge. I think he's trying to take one himself. But, but Reese not going to get that call there. And you may say, well, you're calling all the charges down on that end. Why not a charge in this? And yeah. I thought that was a block call. I agree with the call. Reese picks up his second foul. But uh, chance here for number 12, Trey Heitkamp, a 6'1 junior, to add to his points. He has a three in the game, a free throw back in the first quarter, and a two-point basket in the third. We have some sweat on the floor, too. Going to get that mopped up as it's on the floor. As they get that mopped up. 3.13 to go. 51-26 on the first National Bank Think First scoreboard. My name is Brandon Coverman, Alongside me, Jeff Hinchin. First free throw is good for Trey Heitkamp as Hayden Hillscamp and 
Reed Platfoot come in for Anna and Jackson, respectively. Jace Mullenauer goes to the bench. His night might be over with for the senior. I mean, playing his first game in his senior season in the Habitat of the Cat, a very nice venue here at Jackson Center High School as Highcamp splits the pair from the line. Hartle gives it up over to Fark. Looking on the inside, it's Platfoot spinning, spinning, shot, kisses off the glass, and a nice second half for Reed Platfoot. He's got five points. He hit a triple in the third, and that real nice turnaround jumper. And I like how you said Brandon kisses off the glass. That was textbook, and he's already a 6'5 frame to begin with, so he's a tough stop, but he did a nice move to get him some separation, but more importantly, I like the shot off the glass. Picked off by Hartle. Hartle to the basket, and Platfoot cleans it up. But going back to the, the shot that Platfoot just made, that's like a shot you practice in the driveway. Yes. I mean, that's a, like you said, that's one you, 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 know, you teach your kids, or if you're a coach, you, you teach your kids, and that's just a textbook play right there. And Platfoot now in double figures. Deep three, Siegel, no good. And Platfoot's had a, just a steady game, and again, 6-5 sophomore. She's got a lot of games left. There's another charge. Yep, a third time. And that's a fourth charge this half called against the Tigers. A third one taken by Hayden Hillscamp. I know Coach was always offered Gatorades if he took a charge. He'd be taking three of them tonight. So, you know, again, I, nice I thought it was a good game. call. I thought it was yeah. an excellent call. And that's the thing. You look at someone with a body type of Camden Reese as we got some substitutions in. You know, you're, you're big, strong, bulky. It doesn't take as much to overrun another defender, even though Hayden Hewles can't a pretty strong player himself. You know, that sometimes maybe it can sometimes can be a disadvantage for you on the offensive end. Uh, so Yeah, it's, uh, but I think, again, you talk about coaching. You know, you're not going to win all your games, but they've taught or high camp or hills camps picked up the ability to recognize the offensive player get good positioning hold his ground and take the contact so a lot of guys don't want to do that they just want to not play defense and, exactly and get out of the way 145 to go deep three carter siegel having a nice night he's got 13 his third made three-point shot of the night as you mentioned for the 6-2 senior and 13 points for number two Park on the inside, gives it up to Platfoot. Platfoot with 12 points. Reed Platfoot having a great game. He's perfect from the field. Five for five from the field. The only shots he's missed is a free throw. And again, nice bounce pass assist, if you will. We'll go to Nolan the Fark and Platfoot with a nice finish. Got uh, Cooper Hartle going to come in. And again, we thought it was going to be Nolan Fark. Seemed like a runaway for player of the game. But now he's getting challenged by Mullenauer. Platfoot has a say in it, you know, you never know. Yep, there's a, a tough decision. Another tough, you know, a tough thing for the, when you're the Tigers, how do you stop them defensively? We can't figure out who the player of the game might be. And, you know, think about the other team trying to figure out how do we shut down so-and-so? Well, if you do this too much, he's going to hurt you on the backside or he's going to hurt you here. And that's exactly what the Tigers have done. Shot by Trevor Hubers, good. And it's 59-30. Six-foot senior, a crowd favorite as they chant Huber. Uh, his first three-point attempt is in tonight. And, and I don't think believe Platfoot did not score at all that game against Arushi, but he's had a nice game tonight. 60-30, Tigers get it under a minute to go, and they'll move to 1-1 one one on the season. Uh, the Rockets will follow to that same record. Take that back. Huber, Platfoot scoreless in the first quarter. So he won five quarters, Brandon, before scoring. He did miss a shot in the first quarter, but since that time, five for five from the field and one of two from the free throw line. Twelve different Tigers have scored as well, so spreading the wealth around is very good and the Tigers will dribble it out and they pick up their first Shelby County victory of the year as long with their first victory in the regular season we'll let Jeff tally his stats as I'll read through the sponsors here on NK Telco Sports as the Jackson Center Tigers double up the Anna Rockets 60 to 30 on our first National Bank Think First scoreboard tonight's game is brought to you by Keyhole Pizza First National Bank, Precision Strip, Emerson Climate Technologies, Carriage Works, Grand Lake Health, Kogi Plumbing and Heating, Lincoln Electric Automation, Mr. Bank, Knoxville Supply, 
Pratt Industries, Wagner's IGA, Wilson Health, Winners Meats, Allen Baugh Insurance, and NK Telco. Our Keys of the Game brought to you by Keyhole Pizza. Scoreboard sponsors brought to you by First National Bank. Starting lineup sponsors brought to you by Emerson Climate Technologies. This timeouts are all brought to you by Precision Strip. And our player of the game, which Jeff and I will select here in a little bit, is brought to you by NK Telco. And our Jackson Center Live View sponsor is Allen Ball Insurance. Some additional sponsors are Burke Petroleum, Shiltex LLC, Cy Schwederman, Dickman Supply, Hometown Opportunity, Hulsman Automotive, Park National Bank, Securecom, and the St. Henry Bank as well. We'd like to remind you that NK Telco Sports and its sponsors are pleased to bring you replays of high school basketball here on NK Telco Channel 3 or on HD on Channel 503. You can catch the replay of this game Sunday, December 11th at 3 p.m. or Monday, December 12th at 5 p.m. You can also watch more games on demand through YouTube, Facebook, and at nktelco.com forward slash sports. So again, Taking a look down at the breakdown of scoring by quarter, Jackson Center led 19 to three after one quarter. At halftime, it was 38 to 10. After three quarters, it was 47-17, and it was a 60 to 30 final. So Jeff keeps continuing up those final stats. Take a look at what's coming up for each team tomorrow night. The Jackson Center Tigers are in play here against the Coldwater Cavaliers out of the Midwest Athletic Conference in the Habitat of the Cat. That's a game that you can catch here on NK Telco Sports on our Team Motion camera. Six o'clock JV start, so you can tune into that if you can't make the action here at the Habitat of the Cat and you want to watch the two orange and black teams go at it in Jackson Center and Coldwater. For Anna, they're gonna go on, they're gonna go back to the launch pad tomorrow night and face a team that's just down 274 here, and that is the Indian Lake Lakers, who they'll host tomorrow night as they fall to one and one on the season. And as we have our final stats are brought to you by Mr. Jeff Henschen. Okay, these unofficial stats will go like this. Field goal shooting in the game. For the Anna Rockets, they finished tonight 6 of 16 from two-point range, 4 of 8 from three-point range. That's a total of 10 of 24, so just under 50%, but only 24 shots taken in the ball game by the Anna Rockets. They make 10 of them, 10 of 24. For the Jackson Center Tigers, 12 of 24 from two-point range, 9 of 16, so over 50% from three-point range. Add that all up, 21 out of 40 from the field. Very efficient. 40 shots, not a lot, but, but boy, you made 21, so a great field goal percentage for the Rockets, 21 of 40 compared to 10 of 24. Or 21 of 40 for the Tigers compared to 10 of 24 for the Rockets. Free throw shooting, Anna, 6 of 10. Jackson Center, free throw shooting, 9 of 13. Rebounding totals, Anna pulled down 13 rebounds. Jackson Center, 24 turnovers. 22 for the Rockets, just 11 for the Tigers. Four of them were offensive charges, but uh, you had it all up, Brandon, and there's a reason why it's 60-30 to 30 in favor of Jackson Center. They played good defense, only allowed 24 shots, contested shots, if you will. A very good defensive field goal percentage. They shot the ball very well, and they took care of the basketball. So job well done by the Jackson Center Tigers. And yeah, they double up the Anna Rockets. Just a dominating really win from the beginning. You know, Anna got that, that score right away and you're like, alright, see what happens and then it was it was pretty much Jackson Center domination outscoring the rest of the quarter 19-1 to 1. and it was a long drought for Anna to get that field goal, so uh, their next field goal, so Overall, really domination here by the Tigers tonight. So before we wrap up here tonight, let's name our NK Telco player of the game. Brought to you by NK Telco. Tough decision. I'm going to let you pick it. Well, usually we go to break and we can talk about these pros yeah. and cons for each players. But, you know, you look at the, the outcome. I'm going to lean. Um, I'm going to give it to the to the Fox. Nolan Fark. Um, I mispronounced his name. I knew who he was. For some reason, Fox kept coming out of my mouth. But, you know, he got off to such a great start. Ten points in the first quarter. If he doesn't hit those shots, maybe it's not 19-3 to at the end of the first quarter. Yeah. Um, he did what he had to do. He scored five more in the second quarter. Yeah, he didn't have much of a second half scoring, but still did things, and they spread the ball around. You know, they weren't in uh, attack mode as much maybe in the second half. Other guys made great plays in the second half, but I'm going to go with uh, Nolan the Fox Fark, the 6-2 senior, finishes game uh, tied with Molinar with 16 points. So congratulations to Nolan, our NK Telco player of the game. Before we sign off, I just want to run through Anna's 
uh, stats here. Carter Siegel, 13 points to lead them. Six from Hayden Hills camp. Five from Maryson Carey. Four from Trey Hyde camp. Two from Derek Madner. Total of 30 for Jackson Center. We mentioned our NK Tilco player of the game, Nolan Fark, with 16. Also joining him, Jace Molenauer had 13 in the first half, hit a triple in the third for 16. Those guys lead the way. And another unsung hero that kind of was uh, under the radar tonight, had a quiet game offensively last week, but boy, Reed Platfoot, the 6'5 sophomore, finishes with a dozen, hit a three-pointer in that scoring uh, entourage and uh, did those all in three quarters. Three guys in double figures for the Tigers, also scoring five points from Lucas Hartle. Five points from Bryson Roberts. Three from Trevor Huber. Got a triple in the fourth quarter. Just one point from Camden Reese. That was a free throw. And two from Grant Elkert. Their total of 60. So, again, congratulations to Nolan the Fox Fark on getting the NK Toko player of the game. Again, Anna will be in action tomorrow night at the launch pad against Indian Lake. Jackson Center back here tomorrow night at the Habitat of the Cat against the Coldwater Cavaliers. That's a game that you can catch here on NK Telco Sports on our key motion camera. So we'd like to thank you guys for tuning in here tonight. For Jeff Hinchin, I'm Brandon Koberman. For the final time from the Habitat of the Cat, our final score, Jackson Center 60, Anna 30. We'll see you here next time on NK Telco Sports.